Hello, found another book to read to you guys. Um, this is The Hidden Life of Trees by Michael Wolleben. Sorry, probably not pronounced properly. Um, but um, I'm really fascinated by the interconnected nature of biodiversity and life and how forests work and all dependent on all the bacteria and funguses and how the plants and trees cooperate with each other and I've been told that this book really goes into this so I'm really fascinated to find out and I thought it would be a nice book to share with you all so um, it's not an adventure uh, I will be reading other adventures stories but I thought this would be a nice one to read and at the moment I'm reading it from garden. I'll start. So, The Hidden Life of Trees. And thank you to my mum for getting it for me for Christmas. Yeah, I'll read the forward. We read in fairy tales of trees with human faces, trees that can talk and sometimes walk. This Enchanted forest is the kind of place I feel sure that Peter Volaben inhabits. His deep understanding of the lives of trees, reached through decades of careful observation and study, reveals a world so astonishing that if you read his book, I believe that forests will become magical places for you too. One reason that many of us fail to understand trees is that they live on a different time scale than us. One of the oldest trees on earth, a spruce in Sweden, is more than 9,500 years old. That's 115 times longer than the average human lifetime. Creatures with such luxury of time on their hands can afford to take things at a leisurely pace. The electrical impulses that pass through the roots of trees, for example, move at the slow rate of one third of an inch per second. But why, you might ask, do trees pass electrical impulses through their tissue at all? The answer is that trees need to communicate, and electrical impulses are just one of their many means of communication. Trees also use the senses of smell and taste for communication. If a giraffe starts eating an African acacia, the tree releases a chemical into the air that signals that a threat is at hand. As the, electric, as the chemical drifts through the air and reaches other trees, they smell it and are warned of the danger. Even before the giraffe meets them, they begin producing toxic, toxic chemicals. Insect pests are dealt with slightly differently. The saliva of leaf-eating insects can be tasted by the leaf being eaten. In response, the tree sends out a chemical signal that attracts predators that feed on the particular leaf-eating insects. Life in the slow lane is clearly not always dull. But the most astonishing thing about trees is how social they are. The trees in a forest care for each other, sometimes even going so far as to nourish the stump of a felled tree for centuries after it's been cut down by feeding it sugars and other nutrients, and so keeping it alive. Only some stumps are thus nourished. Perhaps they are the parents of the trees that make up the forest of today. A tree's most important means of staying connected to other trees is a wood-wide web of soil fungi that connects vegetation in an intimate network that allows the sharing of an enormous amount of information and goods. Scientific research aimed at understanding the astonishing abilities of this partnership between fungi and plants has only just begun. The reason trees share food and communicate is that they need each other. It takes a forest to create a microclimate suitable for tree growth and sustenance. So it's not surprising that isolated trees have far shorter lives than those living connected in forests. Perhaps the saddest plant of all are those who have are those we have enslaved in our agriculture system. They seem to have lost their ability to communicate, and as 
Walben says, are isolate, isolated by their silence. Perhaps farmers can learn from the forest and breathe a little more wildness back into their grains and potatoes, he advocates, so they'll be more talkative in the future. Opening this book, you're about to enter a wonderland. Enjoy it. That's by Tim Flannery. Okay, I'll read the introduction in the next video.